hot. Hot. We are hot. 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 Speaker hot. All these hots. We're hot, baby. All the hots. The hoose. The hoose. There you go. And That's all right. I That's all right. Good. You can bring the old, uh, the, the, old, the other music down there if you want to. Yeah, man. I'll tell you what we're doing, folks. It's a damn grown man record night. We appreciate you joining us. we got Steve Fever, Mikey Bananas in the house. Uh, again, breaking down this week's uh, worth in vinyl. And we're not talking about cheap softballs you buy at Sky City, which were also named the worth. We're talking, uh, we're talking uh, record albums, Steve. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I um, want to make sure everybody knows we got a new Facebook page. Go to Facebook and uh, look up Grown Man Record Night. You'll find us. We a need to build a graphic. Facebook page? Yeah, uh, the, it's, the, it's the actual uh, the, the Grown Man Record Night official Facebook page. And that's, uh, that's cool because you can uh, keep up with us. That's where I send all my oh, updates. Yeah. I sent some baloney out during the week, too. Three weeks. Something like that. We've had it about three weeks. I tell you what, tonight we seem a little bit skinny. That's all right with us. Uh, not really. As broadcast professionals, let me tell you something that really bothers me as a broadcast professional. Yeah. Um, that is messed up aspect ratio crap. Oh, sure. You got, your, and, you got your pixel size all wrong. Yeah, and I don't know if I'll fix this by the time this goes to YouTube, but I'll just say here live, everything is all narrowed out. It won't let us... We're well aware of it. We're on the 0.91 ratio. Uh, this should be a little bit wider than this, should and for one, some reason, should be a one, two, one. you stream or and or my camera and or my capture device is being. They're not talking to each other. They're not talking to each other in the way that folks should be communicating. They should talk as to the people and talk, men. talk to the equipment. Yeah, talk to the people. So, um, anyhow, I'm gonna try to figure that out, but whatever. Uh, to work in progress. want to make sure everybody knows about our YouTube channel as well, youtube.com slash Machete Miller. Mm -hmm. All these talk show segments will end up on our YouTube channel. Uh, we got a contest coming soon. I finished my damn uh, intro to the VC video. Really? Yeah, I did. I exported it out to my flash drive. So I'm going to try to... Um, this seems like a work of art. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. But it's, uh, uh, I've, I've been sleeping on it a little bit, and then we're going to do the contest video coming up. I got some ideas for the contest for real. Uh, and we were supposed to do it at 100. We're coming up on 200. I was trying to wait. We're like 187. Probably with the intro to VC. We'll probably bump us up over 200. But even still, I'm still doing the contest. I think I've got the question uh, and the prizes sorted out. So we'll be coming up with a video for that real soon. I've been talking shit about this for a long time. People think I'm probably completely full of shit. I'm just making all this up. Honest to Jeebs. Uh, we're, 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 we're coming back with a contest. He's there. Cool prizes. Cool questions for folks to submit in and all that jazz. Uh, let's run through real fast. I mean, in, in case you didn't know, <laughs> in case you didn't know right here from just looking across this Things desk. Things are coming in. Things are coming in. Um, look at this damn stack of records here. This is substantial. You can't even see what's down here that Steve Fever's brought over. That's a shit stack right uh, there. It's a shit stack. So here's what we're going to do. We're not dilly-dallying. We're not dilly-dallying. No. Oh, no, no dilly dally. Panning would be dilly dallying. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to run through a bunch of records that we've got to talk about this evening. We've got a special theme we were supposed to get to before. No, that was funny. Yeah, we had a whole thing we were going to do before the show. We were going to do a theme before the show. <laughs> no, and we're like, oh, wait, it's no, time for the no, show. And we didn't do any of it. But So we'll do it after the show. And, uh, so we can deep, we can deep tease that. We can deep tease. We're deep teasing that right now. I thought we, I was going to do a little thing where I was like, hey, can you guess what kind of theme we've been playing here recently? Uh -huh. and, and coming up. Yeah, and then we didn't. Can you, can you guess okay. What do these yeah. artists have in common? Yeah, we messed it up. We messed it up. Okay, so let's run down what we played uh, this evening. Billy Taylor, Impromptu, yeah. Cameraman. Um, jazz record. I had to hook up on the way over Fantastic. so I could listen to see what you were playing. And I saw this was up. Miles Davis in Europe. Uh, this is the first Miles Davis I ever picked up. Great record, live business. I think it's in uh, France somewhere, I believe. Uh, it's, uh, Europe is in France. Yeah, Europe is in France. The Antibes International Jazz Festival, Jean Les Pines. Yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, David Bowie. Had to bust a little Bowie. This is a little later. David later Bowie. Later Bowie. David um, Bowie. Let's Dance. It's better than I remember it being. It's the hits, it's the hits album. Pick um, this this one kind of put them on the pop map big time. It was poppy, but still and, good. And this still one good actually bowl. could have entered our our little thing, and we won't say why. But okay. This one we should have included. Who, in play, it. who plays and, guitar on it? Just tell me that. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Stevie, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Cohen. 
keep it aside. Vo Vohan, Maybe keep some, it aside. Some Chohan. Hey, how about a little Jimmy Castor bunch? Our good friend Sean from Jersey uh, interviewed Jimmy Castor. Yes, he did. Very cool. But I picked this up at the record show just a few weeks ago. We checked it out. One this is the Bertha Butt Boogie. It's got the lady with her titty ball hanging out on it. Uh, I'm not going to get too close to the camera because of some regulations. but Of course. But uh, what a fantastic funk record, man. All the way through. Follow it up with my, one of my absolute musical hi, uh, heroes, Mike Patton. This is the Mondo Kane album. Terrific. Is that all that Italian music we were listening to? Yeah, it's uh, it, it's really cool. Really cool packaging. And uh, geez, wow. I don't want to get too crazy on it. It's but. got Yoko Ono on the inside. <laughs> Great record. Uh, if you like Italian, if you like Mike Patton, don't sleep on the Mondo Kane record. Deep, deep yeah. down, my favorite track. YouTube it if you're not familiar. I'm yeah. Um, also, follow this. Follow that up with a record that I picked up kind of on a whim. It's uh, from a whim, a whim. A band called Thirty Alt Six, and the name of the record's Hag Seed. Thirty Eight Special. It is not. This is from 1995. Year I graduated high school. Um, on the Mute America label. Because it's that was 38 special. These guys are really good. Power Trio from the mid 90s. Heavy, thick guitars. Um, almost in the helmet kind of vein. Maybe a little more melodic. Still don't know a lot about these cats, but what a great damn record. Fantastic record. Okay, so the, um, the theme that we were going to get to earlier this evening, in case you guys didn't know, of course they don't uh, know. Like, we didn't do anything. No, no, no. But uh, in case you've not paid attention oh, to the news this week. Some news, musical news. Musical news. We, we like to keep some you moves. apprised of the musical news the moves. Uh, this week. Um, and it, the Stratocaster guitar from Fender. Fender. Leo Fender. Has uh, has turned 60 GD years old. Let's just let's pump this guy 60. in here. Everybody loves the damn Fen uh, Fender Stratocaster. And this right here, folks. This is my actual uh, very first guitar uh, ever, uh, electric guitar. I yeah. played my mom's acoustic, and uh, this is uh, my very first one in the old Hendrix Classic White, and um, it's a Fender Squire. It's a Korean Squire, so it's an El Cheapo, but it's still a damn Fender. It's, it's got this. Than the Chinese Squire. Hey oh. It, it, it still feels like a Strat, it really is. and it, this guitar... What about the British Squire? This, uh, <laughs> this guitar holds a special place in my heart always. Yeah, um, I think my first, well, no, my first electric was some unnamed guitar. Boom, boom. But I did, I, 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 I had a Fender Squire as well. I had the black. Yeah. Look kind of like Blackie, like Clapton's or, or David Gilmore's kind of that black one. Yeah. I, but it was a Fender Squire. I played that in my first band. Um, played it a little bit in my second band, but uh, as I go back to a Fender uh, Stratocaster, nothing plays like a Stratocaster, and um, it, it just seems like home. Um, let's just so anyhow, the Stratocaster turned 60 years old this week. Let's say here, here's a quote from Billy uh, Billy Gibbons, okay, our good friend from ZZ Top, good friend of the program. Okay, yeah. Uh, he, was, he was on the show last week. Yeah, I think so. Check that out. Um, <laughs> I don't think there was ever one soloist or instrumentalist that at some point didn't have their sights set on a Strat, including me and everybody I knew, said ZZ Cop guitarist Billy Gibbons, whose solo on LaGrange was played on one. Not Probably not known for playing a Strat necessarily, but it's cool that he's uh, on that record. The Strat is really the global cornerstone, the reference point of the perception of the contemporary electric guitar. Well, you know, Billy That's Gibbons, what he said. Billy Gibbons guitars could make up a, a museum easily. He, he's a, oh, yeah, he's, he's a, a big connoisseur of, of vintage guitars. So, as they were developing, you know, the Telecaster came out before. The Broadcaster yeah, the, became the Telecaster. Sure, sure. And they were, uh, they were looking to develop something a little different. A three pickup guitar uh, creating more sonic possibilities. Sure. And because things were kind of limited, even though it was electric, the kind of coolness that it was electric kind of wore off. With the coil pickups, right? And so um, it was curvier. That's that, that little notch in the back, man. Yeah. Yeah. It just the, feels. That was the awkward moment. In the it's a, it's feels. a it's a sexier guitar than the Telecaster. The Telecaster has has a straight 
straight lineage yeah. where, where the, the, the Stratocaster has, has a smooth kind of... The guy said, just like a woman. Like, a, and like and her hips. Said, it's like a woman's hips. That's true. It's curved like a woman's right. hips. That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying. And it, it better allowed players to access the upper parts of the fretboard, by the oh, way, that was kind of cut out. The and upper that was, parts. That was kind of... Uh, yeah. That was kind of revolutionary. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So anyhow, tonight what we want to do for our special little theme, and we're going to play some of these records later, is we're going to talk about some of uh, the most influential and legendary uh, Fender Stratocaster players. Well, we're going to talk about some of them, the ones we have vinyl. Within our record collection. Sure. There's obviously some that we're going to be able to miss. I mean, I'm sure you folks will... Oh, but what about, yeah, we're talking about stuff we have in our record collection, which some of the stuff maybe we should yeah, have. Yeah, I would have brought some more stuff. Yeah, but okay. Okay. Yeah, but okay. How about a little BTO? Uh, Randy Bachman. Randy Bachman. Uh, this is actually a record that Cameraman hooked me up with this week, and we'll get to that in Dig of the Week, but we went through all those records out there and uh, that we talked about before, if you've been a fan of the program for a long time. And uh, this is a BTO record, Not Fragile. Um, so, uh, ba -ba -ba. Do roll you on down the highways on here. Yeah. Well, you roll on down the highway. I've not checked this out wow, yet. Wow, 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 wow. But, wow, hey, you see right there, he's, wow, he's rocking wow. the strap. He's a Michigan State fan, by the way. Yeah, he he's is. Michigan State jersey on. In fact, didn't you pick Michigan State to win it all? I did. did you? I did as well. You did the same thing. They did. That's probably the only team left in the game that I. I, I tell you what, this whole uh, bracket, bracket. <laughs> the bracket thing's been. Woo, how about what I'll tell you about picking my random? Yeah, yeah, but it's. Uh, oh, that's that's the way to win. It's been. Uh, and we know most everybody's probably watching basketball tonight. It's been uh, it's been feeling like uh, Bet and Freddie, you know, Flintstones. I've been feeling like Bet and Freddie all week. Bet, 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 bet. That's what I feel like. <laughs> you and two other people. But you know, I will yeah. say this. The first two nights of the NCAA, that's one of my favorite moments of sports for the whole year. Uh, the yeah. first two nights. When you get into the 16 and the 8, that's okay. But there's something about, it's like, it's better than, than what folks watch on American Idol. Because yep. those people oh, yeah. aren't worth a shit. But everybody in this tournament's worth a shit. Steve said... And I tell you what, he said that. if you've never really felt the thrill of watching a sporting event like a lot of folks get into, uh, go bet a whole bunch of uh, GD money on it, and they'll see what you feel about it. It'll change your whole damn shit about yeah. it. I'm just saying. There's there's a number you can call. There's a yeah. I called it when I was 15, and I had a bookie call my house, and my mom got real mad about it. Keeping it moving. Who else do you want to talk James about? J.Y. Young. On uh, James Young from Sticks. Now you is this your who sticks record is this? This yours? You bought it's this. Mine. This is Equinox from uh, 1975. Dude's been using a Stratocaster as his principal guitar almost exclusively since '60 damn seven. Oh yeah. That's what I would call a lifelong user. It's funny. Sticks is funny. It's, it's one really short guitarist. Yeah. And one really tall guitarist. Huh? They look funny jamming so, next to each other. Fork and spoon. Show. Hey, how about you? Probably wouldn't think of this. Tommy Shaw and James. David Burr Byrne. Byrne. David Byrne from the Talking Heads. From the Talking Heads. Now, some of this earlier Talking Heads, you wouldn't finish The gentleman that I interviewed. You interviewed him? Yeah, I did. Oh, that's right. You wouldn't necessarily think of him as a guitar player, probably, or even well, a Stratocaster guy, necessarily. Some of their earlier stuff, like Talking Heads 77. I think Adrian Ballou's influence kind of buried his guitar playing, but this is a great uh, album. It's got uh, Psycho Killer on it, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And this, sure does. this record... Um, Kind of helped he's shape. Got, he's got a lot more hair back yeah, there. Yeah, he does. Look at that. This, he, play, he plays it quite differently. This really helped shape um, the... Oh, that, no, wait. That's uh, the bass. There, yeah. that's, there he is. That's the man. The shape of there, New Wave. There, there, I mean, that's there. that record right there. That's the shape of New Wave right there. we got to go through these faster. Yeah, you think? Okay. John Lennon. Uh, this is a Help, Help album from 1965. This is a Stratocaster. This is a 69 reissue. And this is the original motion picture soundtrack, not the album with all the songs on it. Yeah, so. that, we counted in here. Curtis Mayfield. Hey, listen to this. I never thought of this before. That's a fantastic Curtis Mayfield album. It's a little right? pressing, though. It's really good. But let me tell you something. Inspiration to Hendrix and a quiet Strat virtuoso. Uh, most acclaimed for his falsetto voice, obviously. One, two, now! <laughs> Listen to this. Hendrix cited, right here. Hendrix cited Mayfield as, a big, right here. as his biggest influence. Hendrix. Uh, because of, of a bizarre, bizarre F-sharp tuning. 
that he used. Right. Very crazy. F sharp tuning. Never thought of uh, Curtis Mayfield as a, as a blazing guitar <laughs> this guy. This is my favorite know? shot we've ever done on this show. <laughs> okay. Mike, Mike, Mike looks Wood. like he's half my size. Oh, yeah. listen, I'm a little guy. Listen, little guy. Okay. We're keeping it moving. <laughs> Richie Blackmore. Richie Blackmore from Deep Purple? Deep great, Purple. Great, this is Machine Head. That's Machine what Head. What is that? Quintessential rock and roll album. This is a great, There's a great quote God, about Richie great Blackmore album. in here. Quote. Listen to this. When your influences are Hank Marvin, Dwayne Eddy, and J.S. Bach, you're bound to write the world's most famous guitar riff, Smoke on the Water. That pretty much sums it up right there. Now, speaking of uh, Deep Purple, we're talking a little Tommy Bowen. Tommy now, Bowen. Tommy Bowen, um, he's known as Phil in the Shoes of Joe Walsh and the James Gang and Richie Blackmore in Deep Purple. So he's known as the best replacement guitarist of all time. I don't but know. he's a good guitar player on his own, in his own right. The guy from uh, Funkadelic followed uh, yeah. Eddie Hazel. Way to ruin the bit, Steve. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we're starting the whole show over. This is Come Taste, Three. Come Taste the Band. Come Taste the Band. From 1975, Come Taste the Band, Deep Purple. Yeah, so that's uh, that's after a uh, dude took over for Richie Blackmore. Who's that? Bowen. Tommy Bowen. Tommy Bowen. Okay. All right, uh, Jeff Beck. We featured a Jeff Beck record last week. Um, legendary Strat player. I mean, he's, he's one of the top ones. Um, featured a new one I got from him last week, but this is one of my favorites, the Jeff Beck group. Everybody knows it is the Orange album. It's the one that's got the orange on it. Who knows it's the same? Obvio uh, Soli. I didn't know. Um, fantastic record. I love how Jeff Beck uh, uh, utilizes that uh, tremolo bar and really gets up on that. Is Rod Stewart on this one? No, Bob Tench. Bob Tench. I do not know that gentleman. Do not know that. Okay, we're going to keep it moving. Alex, Life Alex Lifeson. Uh, from Rush. Oh. Yeah. A couple of key albums that uh, he's, he's known for uh, recording the Black Stratocaster. Uh, classic Combuster. Is that racist? Stratocaster. Uh, it was a Gibson toggle switch. Da, 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 da. He, he it included a Floyd Rose and some stuff like that oh, later. Okay. So I just pulled out uh, Farewell to Kings. Yeah, that's a great album. Yeah. I know uh, he played Strat on this album. Absolutely. And it's got some, uh, it's got some good tone. Some people can get terrific tone with a Stratocaster. For other people, it's a little bit challenging. I, maybe because the guitar is so popular. I don't know. Only, yeah. I don't know. Tell me about this. Adrian Ballou, man. Adrian Ballou. You know, started his career with uh, Frank Zappa. Uh -huh. And uh, this is a great album. because This one actually references the, uh, the Strat. And there it is, a picture of the Strat right there. It's uh -huh. called Twang Bar King. Twang Bar King! And uh, it's, a, it's a really cool song. And there's some really great songs on here. I mean, you know, he's play, he played with the Talking Heads and he kind of changed oh, yeah. their sound to kind of fit his style of guitar. But uh, he's played with a ton of other folks. King Crimson, of course. Sure. Uh, but uh, I've seen him a couple of times, once with King Crimson and once uh, solo with a trio, with a, 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 a boy and a girl that were brother and sister. And it was incredible. He's a weirdo guitar player. He's a great guitar player. Thank you, Jay. He loves to make animal sounds. Yeah, I, I like I like cats. I like the Sexy weird rhinos ones. on here. There's yeah. another one called Fish Head. The rail song. There's one. He, he does interesting like whale sounds too. He loves the whale sounds. He does. I've heard him do that before. Keeping it moving. Uh, somebody you probably wouldn't think. U2's War. Now we're talking about the Edge. Now everybody knows the Edge for playing the uh, Gibson Explorer. Uh, with all that digital delay, getting that classic U2 sound. But a lot of these earlier albums, um, he used a Stratocaster. And uh, he, notably on New Year's Day, which is one of my favorite tracks, New Year's Day. Um, he played with a 73 What's model, your mic? Your mic? and he called it Blackie Number 1. Blackie Number 1? Yep. So uh, don't sleep on the edge. Not one you probably thought of it. And it's not your Joshua Tree edge. That's probably more Explorer time. But um, War, hey, Fender Stratocaster. That's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Keeping it moving. Work up a sweat playing a Fender Stratocaster. Buddy Guy, right? <laughs> Don't have any proper Buddy Guy records. I wish to did. I wish to did. Don't have any. Got this great Best of Chicago Blues compilation. Jimmy Cotton, Junior Wells, Otis Spann, Buddy Guy, Big Walter Horton, Johnny Young, Homesick James, and J.B. Hutton. Um, great compilation, but it does have Buddy Guy on it. So for the blues cats out there, check out that that one if it's. It's a nice compilation. Oh, it's it's fantastic. There's a, every track on there is pretty uh, pretty banging. I'll be honest with you. 
I'll be I'll be honest with you. Let's 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 go for another strat guy. Another strat guy. Uh, John Frusciante. Frusciante. John Frusciante. From from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. The Red and this Hot is Chili Mother's Peppers. Milk. Mother's of course, he was milk. with the Peppers, and then he left the Peppers. I think he had some type of this is the he, this and is, then he came he back. Take, for this album, he he had take over for for Hillel Slovak, who had died of a he died. overdose. And so he got kicked he out, and, and this guy came back. He's, he's did, been, did George Clinton produce this album? I don't know about that. No, probably uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Rick yeah, Rubin. Probably Rick Rubin produced that. Oh, shit. I, I, bet, I, bet, I bet Rick Rubin did it. No, anyway. Okay. Uh, great album, though. Okay. We should I'm, listen to that a little later. Hell yeah. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm switching it up. I'm going with our good friend, friend of the program, stand-up guy. We're talking George Harrison. George Harrison? Played now, the track? At, he got his first Stratocaster in 65 and used it for the recording of Rubber Damn Soul. Was that his first real six string? Got his first real six string! Um, yeah, so this, uh, a lot of the songs on the Rubber yeah, Soul. It's one of my favorite Beatles albums. Yeah, Harrison on the, uh, I've seen a lot of talking about, I think our good friend John, um, been posting on the VC about the Beatles a lot this week, and uh, do you know what song he played the Strat on? Oh, he's talking about Revolver. I'm sorry. Do you know what? Do you know what song he played the Strat on? Uh, yeah, he said. Uh, let's see. Um, the, no, but he he did have a um, he had a nickname, Rocky. His guitar was named Rocky, and he painted a bunch of psychedelic shit on it. Okay. Borscht. Like Rocky Erickson. So apparently he played he played a lot of yeah. Good stuff. Okay. Just a couple more. We're getting down to the bottom of our list here. Or a lot top of great of strap list. players. A lot of great strap players. I'm going to do this right here. Some people could say this could be a stretch. It is. It's not a stretch. Yes, it is. Let me just tell you. And we're talking Kurt Cobain. Now, this is Incesticide. That's not the reason stretch. I pulled Incesticide. Do you play strat on it? Well, the, uh, the Incesticide oh, is no, from, really. there are outtakes from, um, not outtakes, but uh, B-sides and rarities from the Bleach sessions as well as the Nevermind sessions. Now, uh, so he, he is known to have played, even though he's known for the Jagstang. Jagstang. Which is one that he kind of developed. Mustang Jaguar um, hybrid. Yeah, he played the Jaguar at times, he played the Mustang at times, but he did play a Strat. He preferred these uh, Japanese import strats that had these kind of weird setups. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. Left-handed Japanese Stratocaster at a period due to their availability in vintage-style small frets. He was a smaller gentleman, but he's known for the other guitars. He did play a strat, and it's one of my musical heroes, and uh, it's my goddamn show. So I said, Kurt Cobain. There you go. Yeah, and uh, what a great record. That's a, I picked that up for Christmas, girlfriend. Okay, we're gonna keep it moving. One of my um, all-time favorite guitar players, Mark Knopfler from Dire Straits. That's the uh, the way he plays. He's a, called a finger-style player, which means he doesn't no, use a pick. A, well, he's a Chet Atkins player. Well, yeah. He he uses his, just his fingers when he plays. This and is my favorite Dire Straits. It's got album. "Soul to Swing," which is a top five it's rock song self, for me. Self-titled ever. Premier. The best guitar solo. The second ever. solo on Di on Songs of Swing is probably my favorite guitar Dying solo swing. ever. Uncomplicated. Uh, no, it's, it's just what it needs to be. Uh, I don't know about, about, about that now. What about that? It's so melodic. He's like so, Gil he's like he's like Gilmore. He's, he's so to melodic. So okay, melodic. we're gonna get to the last few heavy hitters here. We're talking Eric Clapton. The, the swings are getting pretty heavy now. Pretty heavy. Eric Clapton. Eric you thinking Clapton. I'm probably going to talk about Slow Hand. Okay. Whatever. Slow Hand. Everybody knows Eric Clapton's Slow Hand. Great record. Too. There's a good picture of a Strat on it. Yeah, look. That's Blackie. That's, that's, that's Blackie. Before. Yeah, let's show that's that. That's his famous Blackie. But that's so well known. Let me just tell you what I'm going to talk about. This is the uh, London Wolf. How, uh, no. The London How oh, look, Wolf head, I put my head on this right here. Put your head on it, Steve. Like, I trust like, you to put your head on it. Make moves on it, Steve. Put your head on it. Okay, there we go. We're going to write a pop song. <laughs> All right, sorry. Your, bike, your mics are a bit hot. Sean says our mics are hot. Maybe turn our main, uh, our main gentleman down, just on the board of it. Just a touch. Just a touch. 
on the on the main board. Yeah, yeah, this one over here. Little Mike, nope. Big Steve continues. Um, we're just calming it down. Okay, everybody, everybody take a deep breath. Let's hook this uh, 1960 technology. We're just taking it. It's analog technology. I'm of course it works. All the mics down, just so you know. Of course it works. All the mics are coming down. So um, when we're talking Clapton, I pulled this London uh, Howlin' Wolf Sessions. It's got Clapton, Steve Winwood, Bill Wyman, Charlie Watts. It looks better over here. Now. So it's Clapton playing some real blues, blues business on here, man. Is Howlin' Wolf on here? Yes. I so Howlin' Wolf went to England and recorded with these cats. Yeah, they met backstage. We talked about this on a uh, previous program, uh, if you remember. You probably don't. <laughs> <know. laughs> Let's uh, start the whole show. I don't remember nothing, boss. I don't, I don't remember nothing. Is it okay now? <laughs> Things are... He says much better. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, yeah Man, my man's right. always he's working right. out. They were hot, and now they're not. Let me, you want to talk about they a stand... They were hot, and now they're not. This we're comes hot. from our sound engineer. You want, to, you want to talk about a stand-up uh -huh. guy. Sean's a stand-up guy. He does right. He does right we by need, me. We need some folks on the other end. He does right by me. shit's not right. He, he, yeah. Ignore okay, the, we're into big hitters. Ignore Everybody the fact that down. my head's as big as most okay. of your you know body. I, just gotta say, and you, you should repeat, they I should get even closer. We haven't checked the, the master out from this thing. Yeah, there's no telling. Yeah, whatever. Thing. We'll it's talk about that later. Well, there's no telling. There's no telling. You're not on a mic. You can't tell. I know. That's what I was trying to... Okay. Hear everything I say for the next 30 seconds. Big time business. It's If you showed me Clapton already, I can't even believe what you might show me next. David Gilmore, and we've busted out Cameraman's version of the wall. Now, let me just tell you, yeah, there's a lot. Is this my favorite uh, David Gilmore? Eh, probably not, although it's, it's up there. But I saw this time and time again when I looked up this uh, record. His solo, Uncomfortably Numb, remains for many a definitive strap moment. Everybody says the solo on Comfortably Numb <laughs> is like one of the biggest rock and roll guitar solo moments and one of those moments that defines Fender Stratocaster. So while I may like another album a little better, Comfortably Numb. That, that's, we'll play that some bitch and song here coming up. That solo sings. It does. In a certain way, and there's a lot of legend about his particular strat. I have legend. Uh, uh, his strat actually says um, it's like 00001 on the back. So everybody thought it was like the first Strat, but it's really not because they didn't actually do it that way. But there's a lot of legend behind his guitar, uh, and there's a lot of legend behind his playing, Steve. Really? I'm glad you said that. We'll be right back. Uh, no, I thought that was a toss to break. Okay, I don't know what that was. It All right. Good though, you should have went with it. Yeah. Okay, we're hitting it up with the one and the reason, the GD reason. I brought this. Uh, I bought this in 1995. This white Stratocaster, uh, which I'm normally a guy that's like, oh, I want the fluorescent green one with the arrows and the glitter on it, because mm. I'm just kind of wired that way. Mm. Um, but the reason I got the classic white one is my man right here, mm. Jimi Hendrix, the king of all Stratocasters, and I'll say it. There it is. And uh, this is the um, upside down for a left-handed genius. Are you experienced? This was from my dad. Original pressing. F an original shrink wrap. It's got the price tag still up there. This thing's in, it's got, it, it's got a little pop on it uh, here and there, but man, it's in, in fantastic shape for what no, it it's is. A, it's about to pop out. Don't pop it out, Steve. That's against the rules. And I'll tell you what, uh, give it up for the Fender Stratocaster. It's on the reprise label. Yeah, on the reprise. Speaking of reprise, we're gonna go from this right into a dig of the week, and I'm gonna finish up this Stratocaster moment to use it as a crossover into dig of the week. Um, and I'll tell you why. Here's a record I picked up today when we went out to the today. store. Steve. Um, and we're talking another Jimi Hendrix, and this is Crash Landing. This was released 75 on reprise, and uh, this is one of those releases that was uh, released post humorously. Um, Watch out, that's gonna fly. And the the dude came back and uh, post humorous. Yeah. Not so funny. Not so funny. Leg bone. Leg bone. Humorous. Um. So dude, uh, dude came back and th th there was a big controversy because uh, 
Supposedly they brought some other musicians in to finish up some of these tracks that were maybe like not quite all the way ready to be put on a record. Yeah, because I, when I saw you, had, there was a guitarist that played on there other than Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. That's weird. And Bob Babbitt plays bass. Bob now, Bob Babbitt, Babbitt played with uh, Dennis our man Dennis Coffey in That's Detroit. Right. That's right. And I think he also played bass with Dennis Coffey on Rodriguez and stuff. So the guy that uh, ended up producing this stuff from the tapes, apparently he, he, he recorded a bunch of stuff before he died. This guy was kind of hard to sift through it, come up with some legit business out of it. Uh, re received some criticism because he was like, oh, this is a great song, but it needs a little more percussion and brought another drummer in. Mm -hmm. mm. Or what if we just re-recorded this bass and instead of going down, it went up, brought a new guy in. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see where the controversy may have come in. I've not the listened to the record. I'm not passing judgment. It's a Hendrix I didn't have. I'm sure it's going to be great. Uh, as long as you enjoy it, you know, enjoy F &A, it. F&A, man. Hey, okay, we're going to continue with the dig of the week. Um, so here's the deal. If you've uh, followed the program any, any time at all, no. you know that uh, several months ago, Cameraman picked Cameraman. up an enormous yeah. amount of records. It filled up a whole room. They, and they've been sitting in my living room forever. Last Sunday, uh, we decided to go through all these records, and we broke them up into like, oh, the country section and the, the gospel section, and here's the bullshit section that nobody's gonna want, and then the stuff that he could probably get a buck for, because there was a lot of dollar records, and it was a, few, a little stack of some like legit, like worth some money and records. a lot of spoken word. Borst. And uh, Cameron took a good stack for him he wants to keep, and he was so generous enough to give me a, a big stack of records here from that stack. So for this week's Dig of the Week, in addition to that Jimmy Hendrix record that we just talked about a few minutes ago, we're going to talk about some of the stuff we got from the stack. It was interesting to see you go get records and you bought one record. I, I bought mean, one that, record. That's good. <laughs> that's good. That's a first for me. That's that good. That may be the first time and I've you should ever... savor that and see how it felt and, and maybe... How about a tequila shot? Or a jello shot. Or a jello shot. There's some of those in there too. I don't care. Steve doesn't care. Uh, okay. Uh, cameraman chooses tequila. So that's what's happening. So he, hang on, folks. We're going to go through some of these records that Cameraman has uh, been so nice to give to me. Yeah. And. Um, you want me to go through my records real quick? You want to go through yours, Steve? Because <laughs> when I look at your stack right there. Yeah. I'm, 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 I sweat a little okay, bit. Okay. What'd you pick up? Hold on. I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna grab this right here. Okay. There's one song left on this album, by the way. That's playing. That's what we're playing now. No, it's not. We're listening to Front Row Center right over there. Your uncle's band. The first thing. Tell me about your uncle. I'm gonna call this from the vault. I, I, I should build a graphic from the vault, where it's like, I got these records downstairs. I haven't brought them and in, included them in my collection yet. Downstairs. I'm, not, I'm not ready for that yet. These were given to me by a friend whose father was a principal violinist for the Savannah Symphony. Oh. And these are mostly symphonic, and there's some other stuff involved. I, the, uh -huh. the record I grabbed uh, is called the Andy Statman Klezmer Orchestra. You're making all that up. No, it's really cool. Three album. of those four words you made up right Very there on folk the spot. Klezmer, apparently Klezmer music is uh, these traveling musicians that would go to different countries and play music, and so they'd learn Romanian dances, Jewish uh -huh. dances, Ukrainian, Turkish stuff, and, and so this band is based on that. And the cool thing about it is this guy, Andy Statman, plays clarinet, yeah. but he also plays mandolin. So a lot of songs you huh. hear are very clarinet driven, the others are mandolin driven, an incredible mandolin player. Hmm. Uh, and the French horn player also plays trumpet, so they switch up and play... Double just horn. A, just incredible stuff. Uh, if you, just, just a quick warning, you keep talking all this ethnic stuff, we'll start the show all over. It fits in well with some of the stuff we were playing already, though. That's the cool thing about it. Yeah. Okay. I just, I love, I love world music. We're yeah, gonna do this quick, I guess. Skull. Mm. Oh, that's good stuff. You want to talk about that? Uh, Later, maybe. No, because we'll do. We'll take too long on it. But I, I also picked what you up. Got, Steve? Uh, I got that record. This Steve. record. The only reason I picked up because you had it and I loved it so much. I love helping people with music. This is Spanky and Our Gang, without rhyme or reason. Yeah. And the thing about on here that blows my mind is a song called One Three Five Eight. One Three Five Eight. It's what they call a pedagogical round. Hmm. 
Yep. And they, they just, they're playing with numbers. If you, the one is the is the root note of the of the chord, and the eight is the the there octave of the one. Seven is the, the seventh of the of the eighth scale. So it's like these, and they it's just amazing. But there's there's people I know that are really good at this, and I want to share this with them. It's going to blow their minds. Yeah, so. that's got a cool inner sleeve too. Just, just, just like, the best way if, if you learn it, it's one four five three seven eight one, and you know everybody sits there and goes. Are they all harmonic? I have no idea what you're talking about. Have you, have you looked at the inner sleeve of that? Um, I'm just telling you, it's cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like yeah. space with yeah. this clear. Okay. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, I'm a big fan of ELO. It's one, the yeah. first record I ever bought was ELO's Out of the Blue. But this record mm -hmm. is their symphony. It's called oh, El Dorado. Yeah. Of course, you, you'll recognize the scene on the front. It is from, of course... Yes, Casablanca. There we go. <laughs> Jay gets it from the crowd over there. Casablanca. The ruby red slippers of Casablanca. Great, great album though. 1974, I believe. Yeah. Uh, moving on real quick. What you got? Uh, the Butterfield Blues Band. Woo! 1971. Man, Paul don't Butterfield. Don't sleep on the Butterfield Blues When I Blues saw Band. this album, I, when I, what really got me was there's a guy, there's a black guy holding a mandolin, and I thought, huh. yeah, I gotta get, I gotta yeah. have this album. And what? That's not Another cool thing is uh, a young gentleman that's, named that's Dave, San, Dave Sanborn plays the saxophone. Oh, look out now. Hey, yes. you know who loves uh, Butterfield Blues Band? Who? Call the Envelope. There you go. He turned me on to him. Uh, another album from 1971, Cactus. Oh, yeah, I love some Cactus. Restrictions. Cactus was a, a blues driven rock band. Sure it is. Uh, great album. Happy to pick that up. A couple more, real quick. Uh, Today we were out and I picked up uh, a band close to my heart. This is the producers from Atlanta in the 80s. Yeah, well, I don't, I'm New not familiar way, with them. A lot of people aren't. Uh, I grew up in Georgia and they they had a hit called uh, What's He Got? Yeah. It was like 61 on the top 100 charts. And, oh, okay. Yeah, they had a mild hit there, and, and uh, but it was a fun new wave band. I'd like to throw that on a little later. Yeah, sure. When we get done doing what we got to do. Two more. Oh, you saw that? I meant to tell you about that, and that guy oh, got yeah. in my way. And it doesn't, it's Best of the Birds, Volume 2. Uh, and the songs don't jump out at me as like, you know, the big, big, big ones, because that's yeah. Volume 1. But it's got Ballad of Easy Rider, uh, Jesus is Just Alright. I can't wait to hear that. Yeah. Jesus is Just Alright, which of course oh, yeah. everybody knows as the Doobie Brothers. Sure. Last but not least, uh, my big uh, grail was the 13th Floor Elevators. Now this is the 2000 press. 2009, 2011. I think it's maybe. I don't know. I think it's 2011. Maybe. Well, it's, it's got the, it's, the catalog well, it, it's number new. starts with it's an new. I. It's sealed. It's like I L M something. Yeah, it's I A <coughs> International yeah. Artist or whatever. Yeah. L P. Yeah. I've got that same so one. So this is you know. This I don't is think it sounds bad. Roki Erickson. I I just I I'm heard so some, happy to have it. I heard it. some grumblings about it, and I'll tell you, you what, what, man, it sounds better than a lot of records I got. To have it or to not to have I, it. You got I the want, same. I want to have it. And you got it the same place I got it, where it was a. It's like ten bucks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah man, it's worth that. I, I was happy to have it. Sure, it's worth that for real. Okay, let me go through some of the stuff. Cameron hooked me up with from this, from this box. Uh, this is from thousands of records and we separate everything out this is what i got to take away from so it. you're going to go through so fast that oh, i don't Jesus. need to sit up there if i start nodding big time that means this one needs to be a hey janet jackson rhythm nation Shh, come on now that's good stuff you better just drop them right there here's some here's some 12 inch uh some uh hip-hop 12 inches uh new edition and it's not hip-hop hip-hop new uh, edition new edition uh heartbreak 12 inch Got a lot of 12 inches. Let's see, busting through these. Um, second to none, up in the club, busting it. Keep moving. Okay, this is a little newer, 2005 Flowetry. It's Superstar featuring Flo Common. Flowetry. Common is legit, produced by Scott Storch. Um, I don't know, I've not checked it out. He's a good producer, or at least he, I mean, I don't know, I saw him on Cribs. He had a big uh, thing around his neck. Moving right along. Okay. Uh, Yarborough and Peoples, <laughs> guilty. Yeah, 100 more to go through. This is an 85, 12 Yarborough inch. Yarborough and like, Peoples. Looks like hip hop to me or R&B. Nah, it's soul. Uh, Cheyenne, probably R&B. Okay, moving right along. 
There's another 12 inch Rainy Davis. You know Rainy Davis? No, I don't. Move on. Okay, moving on. <laughs> All right. Uh, Lisa Lisa and the Cult Jam with full force. Take me home. And it says in parentheses, rap. That may be legit. That may be right. worth listening to. That's right. a 12 inch maxi. Maxi? Yeah. 45. Lisa Lisa UT maxi. Elf, UTFO. Leader utero? Of, in utero? Leader of the pack. Leader of the pack. Some good 12 inches in here, man. What are you talking about? Uh, can't wait another minute. The Eminem, Eminem remix, not that Eminem. Five uh -huh. star. Uh -huh. I don't know what that is. Cameron just tacked some of these on. Okay, now let me tell you. Uh oh, uh oh. Here I we got, go. I got at least a few. I got three Zamfir records. <laughs> and flute. Let me tell you what, my mom. You remember Zamfir. Zamfir. My mom loves Zamfir. Nothing says Zamfir like a smoky shot, like put Vaseline on the lens and give it that kind of hazy. And then put a 1-800 number over it. Um, but hey man, who get who better gets down on a pan flute than Zamfir? That's hard to say. There you go. Who better gets Probably down on a Case closed. A what flute? How many times do I need to close this flute? case? Pan flute. A pan of flute. Pan of flutes. Okay, let's get this is uh, music, an original hits from the soundtrack of American Graffiti. This is not the original soundtrack, but it's all not the quite. songs not quite. on that. It's all the songs on that. Okay. It's all the good shit, for real. Okay. I love that movie, American Graffiti. It's a lot of work, so put it, there's a lot of songs on that. Makes me want a street race. Just someone had to recreate all those. Okay, got a couple of Kiss records. Kiss Dynasty. Dude, dude, this, is their, this is their disco album. Number one, Ronnie Hutchins. Number one, Ronnie Hutchins. It says number one, Ronnie Hutchins. I have this album, and uh, it's it's a fun album. You know, it's number it's. One. There's a great uh, cover of 2000 Man, the Rolling Stones. Yeah. You know? Well, my name it is a number. Yeah, that's that's a pretty cool uh, album actually. But it's it's their disco album. They got pan. Kiss for it. rock and roll over. I got another copy of this. That's oh, I love I me. love this cover. Everybody we, wants we, this. We may be uh, we may be talking a little trade on that one. I don't know. Let's just do this. No, no, no. Because I got doubles on that one. I think. Hot dog. We can talk hot dogs. Hot dogs. You trading hot dogs? How about that? the Eagles' favorite? Uh, favorite. Oh, I was going to pick that up this week. It, it, there's a couple copies of it. Eagles' first record, right? Yeah, and this uh, one's cool. It's got. Uh, what year is that? 69? It's got Bernie Leeton on it. He plays the banjo. Uh huh. This is, you know, the Eagles got their start in the Troubadour. There's a really, really, really good documentary on YouTube. It's a BBC documentary called uh, Hotel California from the Birds to the Eagles. And yeah. It covers the L.A. Oh, music you were telling scene. me about that. It's country rock music scene. So it's like Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, Crosby, Stills, Nash, or Johnny Mitchell, James Taylor. Birds it, on it, there, right? It makes its way up to the Eagles. The birds were on there? Oh, yeah. It yeah. starts with the birds. Okay. Yeah, that whole scene started with the birds. And this, I can't remember. Uh, I don't want to take too much time. Let's just take a peek. Yep. Uh, it's a little cleaning, but it's not bad. Needs to be clean. James Dean's on this album. It's a really, really? You know, James Dean. Jimmy. Hey, how about uh, I love music from uh, medieval and Renaissance. Don't periods. we all? And NHS. that's why I like the Straubs, and that's why NHS. I like Renaissance. That's, and uh, yeah, this is a cool. Record. Here's a Phase Four stereo uh, record on London Records called "The Fantastic Sounds of Guitars Unlimited." What Don't know. It looks. What am I doing? Looks effing great to me. Yeah, just stand up there, Steve. I'll just hand them to you. Just keep handing them to me. Okay. Van Halen, Women and Children First. No cover. No, no cover. cover. What, one of my but favorite. Record, one of my favorite Van Halen. The record's in decent shape. Yeah. No big deal. Everybody wants some. A blowjob too. That's what I thought it was when I was a kid. Sorry. A salute to Tijuana Brass. Living series. Don't know. I like uh, Tijuana Brass. A salute Brass. to Tijuana Brass by Cam on the Camden label. Well, sorry, backwards. Here's something on ABC, uh, Farewell to the First Golden Era, The Mamas and the Papas. The Mamas and the Papas. Like California Dreamin's on here. California Dreamin's on there. Like the Stopped into Eddie a Vedder. church. That could be legit. Eddie Vedder into the wild. Yeah. Like that hey, here's another Eagles uh, on the A lot of people lived in buses back then. Which one is this in the lineage, Steve? You know that? Got down on my Eagles? knees. Is this Desperado? What is this? Why don't you come... Oh, why don't you? What's the uh, what's the title of this album? I don't know about football. it. I think it's Desperado. Football. Sorry. Pretty sure it's called Football. It's just called Eagles. What the hell? Okay. No, I don't know anything about this at all. It's from 1972. 
like the, probably the first greatest hits. I'm guessing. I don't know. No, no. No. Your uncle. Talk about your uncle. Hey, here's a uh, 12 inch called Born in the USA, the Stanley Clark Band. I didn't know. No, they take the Bruce Springsteen. It's like a kind of a hip hop electro version. Have you listened to it? Born in the USA. It's interesting. Have you listened to it? I have. It's good. Is it? It's good and and dude, it's good. How about some Roman Roman guitars? Tony Matola. Hey, baby, the boppity. I'm Tony Matola. You're in my way. I'm baby, baby, I'm so sorry. Hey, uh, hey Copernicus, why don't you navigate yourself to the back of the line and stand there with your feet and <sighs> hang out with your shirt? All right, keep moving. You got, you're got you about halfway done with this list. You're okay. about halfway done. What do we got here? Hey, here no, we go. He's I'm tired. I'm tired. I know. He's <laughs> LL Cool J, 1985. What's I can it give called? you more. I can, I can give, give you more. more. LL Cool J. That's Another 12 That's Jam Records. That's Mr. Uh, yeah, that's good. Bob Saget. Invisible Man's Band, All Night Thing. Visible Man Band. Awesome. On that thing. Here's one of the two uh, LPs from uh, BTO, Four Wheel Drive. Four Wheel Drive. That's a double LP. That's one of them. I don't have the other one. Yeah, that's just <laughs> half of it right there. <laughs> you don't got it. You don't got it. You can't give it to me because I don't have it. You can't give it to me. Well, what do you have? I don't have it. What, what is this? Herb Albert, 12 inch garden party, promotional copy. Garden party. White label promo. White label promo. Herb Albert, a white label promo 12 inch. Moving on. You're racist. No, come on now. White skipping, label you're promo. You're skipping now. That ain't little what long. You got? Somebody what messed you all got? this up. Keep it moving you down the line. Oh my God. Jefferson Starship. A lull in the action. It's got a ching chong ching. Spitfire on the cover. Spitfire. What you know about it? Anything? I don't know about I'm scared about this one. 1976, it's Grunt Records. Grunt. You can't go too wrong with that. You yeah. know, they were still. Hey, different strokes. And Grace was, look, Grace was just starting to fall apart. Look, because she was uh -huh. so pretty. What's, what's up with her? But look at Grace, she's just starting, right she's starting to fall apart. She's hey, falling buddy. all apart. Hey, buddy. Different strokes, fantastic compilation. It's got tons of people from the 60s, from Miles Davis, Tom Rush, Johnny Winter. But the flock. Damn. It's got Soft Machine on it. Oh, uh, compilation with Soft Machine on it? Yeah. That is too much. Yeah, I've got good. it. It's in shit shape. Pretty good. Uh, but uh, Cameron hooked me up with another copy, so hopefully his copy's better than mine. Simon and Always Garfunkel, is. Bridge Over Troubled Water. Here's good a album. Santana record I didn't have. Ah. I don't know what the, which one is this. The Columbia e Records. The, that's the one with the lion. It's, it's self-titled. <laughs> this yeah, is just the, the, the cover. It's, it's the first album. Cover's busted. Really? It's got Evil Ways on it. Yeah. Soul Sacrifice, which is which is what you know really from uh, Woodstock, the the drum solo. Evil, 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 evil. Shut the hell up! The drum solo on Soul Sacrifice is one of the great moments of Woodstock. Yeah, that that's good stuff. Little guy on drums is killing. How about a little Hot Tuna? This will be my third Hot Tuna record. I like the title of this one. Burgers. Straight burgers. Up. Steve, man. you had some burgers this I evening. Had bur went to a fancy burger restaurant. Steve Fever went to a fancyburgerrestaurant.com. And you know what I got? A chicken sandwich. Oh, get out of here, Steve. I did. Come on now. Okay. Go and take a lap for me. <laughs> Just go and take a lap, Big Daddy. Big Daddy. Big Daddy, take a lap. Grand Funk shining on. That's a Grand Funk I didn't have. This looks like, like 3D. Is this thing like 3D? I like Grand Funk now. You got 3D glasses for this? <laughs> this is a 3D, by the way. I like old Grand Funk. Put on your 3D funk. glasses, everybody. I'll drink some and damn enjoy the ride. Liquor. And I'll talk to people about Grand Funk Railroad. You got your 3D glasses on. I hope you do right now, because yeah. this is worth the trouble. And take them off. OK. <laughs> Uh, tell me a story, Aunt B, Aunt Bertha, and the Children's Bobble Aunt, Hour. You mean Francis Bovier? No. Francis Bovier. It's a Bobble Hour. Look at that right there. You tell me that's not just Gold City right there all over that. Um, I love weird ass records like that. And I've got away from that because I got into like collector mode and I only buy collector records and I'm, I'm Mr. Baseball Collector and that's why I go to the record stores. Hey, there's a high and, wire guy. And this is the first kind of shit that I was originally attracted to buying records is weird ass like children's records and just random baloney the spoken word and it's cool to get back to that Getting or you back. just pick up something because there's a weirdo Getting cover. back to it yeah speaking of medieval man uh medieval art has always freaked me out it's a medieval day crazy no, no. that 
that shit freaks me out. I don't want. Here's one of those 35 getting, millimeter. One of the, We're the audios there. recorded on a 35 millimeter film, um, and I've got one of these. And cameraman offered me that, so I, I knew it's got to be. It's got to be good. Beach Boys 20 Greatest Hits. No cover. No cover on Capital. But it's in good shape. What do you know about that? Yeah, it's good stuff. Can you talk on that? Uh, you speak to that. Enchant <laughs> Enchantment. Once upon a dream. I think we put this on, it was kind of funky. Oh, uh, I like the label. Roadshow label. It's, yeah. Uh, Look at this. I've got four, count them, four. Which I know I've, I've, got, gone, I've gone wireless to Cornet, to help, those cornets. To help out the process. These are from Command Records. Command. The, Command. From the I love Command Records. They're provocative cool. Percussion and Persuasive Percussion. Yeah, Terry Snyder. Terry Snyder group. There's yeah. four of them. This is four. Yeah, spraying Steve. I don't give a, I don't give an f. Hey, don't say that. I'm not going. They're all kind of cool. I hate all modern records. art covers. Uh, this one, that one, and the other one. That's yeah, so cool. And man. there's one more. That's awesome. So I think I have two or three of these, but these are great. Okay, keeping it moving. I got a these Doug. I'm gonna fall down by the way. I got a Dougie Fresh, the original piece. human beatbox, 12 inch. The, this is the original human beatbox. Yeah, profile jacket. So he, it says original human beatbox. You don't need to see it. You don't need to see it. You don't know about it. Peter, Paul, and Mary moving. Look at the shape this is in. In the original shrink. Peter, Paul, and Mary. Not yeah. only one, but all three of them. Oh, this is in perfect condition. That's what I'm saying. I've got a lot of Peter, Paul, and I've Mary. I've got a couple in there, like 1700 Boulevard, whatever that is. That's I've got some greatest hits. It's kind of beat up. Mine are all beat up, and I'll tell you what, they, they came from my mom. My mom is a big fan. Hey, there's a song in here called Puff. You think it's yeah. is it Puff? Yes, yeah, Puff the Magic Dragon. Is it? I've been looking for that. that. That's what I was going to say. <sighs> Listen to me, Steve. <laughs> My mom was the biggest fan. That's how she learned how to like finger pick. And then when I was a little kid, she taught me, not a little kid. When I was a kid, she taught me how to play guitar, and that was kind of how she played. Was Ooh, Peter Paul and Mary style. Love that Magic rascal puff. puff. He, I learned in that tradition. And then was like, well, what about Nirvana? When they go like, man, 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 you know. And, but my she mom was like, no, she was, but she helped me like, my mom went through with me on, went through on Nirvana Unplugged, me and my mom in the living room with a VCR and I would back it up and pause it. And I was like, oh, what is that? And she was like, well, that looks like a neat minor to me. Really? And yeah. And I would, and so I would write it down and then like, so I knew that like this Nirvana song was these records and I would, then I would figure it out from there. I'd have to say not many. Folks shared that memory with their mother. Yeah, I have Hell to see yeah. how many people have done that. Hell yeah. yeah. Well, she was in that cool. tradition, but she realized that that was my well, Peter Paul and Mary, so I'll help you figure out them chords. Why wouldn't I? Or my Nazi? Is my mom a Nazi? Who's saying my mom's a Nazi? Oh. Wow. We'll go. Hey, we'll go out in the yard. <laughs> Throw down. This man This man used to be a fighter, so don't, don't mess with him. You gotta see the... You guys seen the gym around? The gym on the first floor? Uh, all right, a couple more from the stack. We're talking oh. Black Sabbath, Mob Rules. This is such an important album in my life. Yes, and Black Sabbath. Had, uh, we sold our soul for I rock and roll. shirt, t-shirt of this album. Nope. Nope. No, he can't. They're in rough shape. That's Dio. This one's not Dio. This one's That's Ozzy. the first Sabbath Ozzy. compilation, right? I think so. Um, we sold our soul for rock and roll. That one is definitely salvageable. I need to clean both of these using the uh, Chris from DC Land Farm method. No. Um, and then we can talk trade with a uh, cameraman. And speaking of trade, this is one, this is not mine, folks. This is still cameraman's. Because we're going to talk. The last of your list? Are you down to the last of your list? This is my very last for Dig of the Week. Um, and this is something, it's still cameraman's. I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not saying this is mine. This yeah, is a yeah, no, 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 no. I'll I, trade I you some. Trade right I'll find something nope. for you. Well, I, tell, tell, what, tell the people what it is. It's Chuck Berry. I have to give it to you, or let me know. And it's called Chuck Berry. That looks like sweet a, little rock and roll. That's roller. too sexy looking to be original. No, is that a reissue? I know. This is on Pickwick. It's like a Canadian. 80s, like an 80s show. It's a Canadian reissue on mm -hmm. Pickwick. The good old uh, friends from Pickwick. Yeah, and it's got the original shrink on it. It's in decent shape. It says two for three dollars. No, three for two dollars. 
special price. Let's hold that guy up. That's got a terrific cover. The that's back my, is better. That's my number one. I really like the back of it better than the front. Yeah. Um, I had a real hard time finding that record and finding out information about it. Well, it's Pickwick. Yeah, pick, there's Pickwick releases this of This is like what it, I like man. about it. It's like Chuck Berry. It looks like some kind of cool. What I like about it is Chuck Berry is the reason that no, I play They got license to print. It's like Canada and Chuck, uh, England. Chuck Berry is absolutely the reason I play guitar. And I'll tell you what, these are not songs I see on other Chuck Berry records. You play a Strat? I play a Gibson. He played a Gibson, like a 335. Yeah, like 1275. Yeah, some uh, hollow body. Yes. Um, I like my grandpa. Your grandpa? Played a Gibson hollow body, one of the first electric guitars. Yeah, man. Okay, let's wrap up Dig of the Week. And I'll tell you what, we'll take this opportunity from Dig of the Week. I've done so much GD talking. We gotta play this Chuck Perry. I've done so much GD talking, we're gonna we're gonna go on into a damn old soda speak. And uh, we got we gotta take a leak so bad I can taste it. Yeah, man. We got a cool soda we're gonna try this hey, week. Hey, you see him? Is there a diet Mountain Dew over there? It's in the door. It's in might, the door. It might be sitting right there. Yep, that's okay. where I left it. I don't give a shit. Um, so we're featuring this uh, it's, soda this season. It's the only diet with dew in it. That's what I'm saying. Um, we're featuring this soda this evening from a company called Cool Mountain. Now this Cool Mountain, uh, it's a green apple flavor. It says, a, it says it's a fountain classic. So It says a fountain classic. Caffeine free. Uh, and it says, are you thirsty? A question marker. <clears throat> It followed its statement with a question marker. Yep. All right now, all right now. Calm down, whoa, son. I got it, I got it. Um, this is a, this does contain pure uh -oh. cane sugar. Out of control. Did M Mitchum pull their ads, folks? Oh, whoa. Oh. Well, we I, was gonna, I was going to mention something yeah, about I've got with the NCAA tournament. I was wondering sure. about this. There's so much going on. Right. There's so much exertion going on. Like in my life, Steve. Where do you think Mitchum falls? Do you think that Mitchum is uh, involved in, in keeping everybody dry? I would think so. Anti-spired? Anti and even more so than your average athletic player because a lot of these cats are younger, in their 20s. I didn't They're putting off a lot of smells. I didn't, as a man, I didn't smell so bad when I was in my 20s, but if I was a 40, 50 year old man wearing a suit on the sideline about having coronary, I'd oh. probably smell pretty bad. The fact that those guys wear suits is ridiculous. That's probably where the smell is coming from, and that's why the coaches in the NCAA tournament uh, if they're not wearing Mitchum, they're they're uh, probably gonna lose. They're gonna lose. I, thought, I think that's and, the takeaway. I don't think NC State's coach was wearing Mitchum. No last night. way. I don't think Mike Shashevsky was wearing Mitchum today. Of course he wasn't. Good, good thing. He was sweating through his suit. You could see he was it wearing from a some suit Slavic coat. kind of Slavic stone or something he was under his arms. Uh, stuff made for a Polish rat. You take that quote, you write it down, you fold it up, and you shove it up your ass, Internet. You shove it up your damn ass, Internet. All right, now. Calm okay, down. I'm sorry. Calm down. Basketball. Backed up. Basketball gets Backed me. Up. Basketball you got gets money me. on the game. Nah, I got you got money. money on the game. I got, I don't you put be money like, on the game. I don't want to be like that. Back up. All right, who's got an opener for me? <laughs> Is this, this thing won't open? <laughs> oh, shit. No, you, you need a damn gentleman for that. Yeah, I know. Okay. No, you can't do that. Oh, did you? Look at Steve. Fever! Whoa! <laughs> Jesus Christ, and I'm serious here. You might be Jesus Christ. You just opened a damn uh, pop top with your damn shirt. Gee. I give up too easy. If you know anything about my life and uh, it's so, what do we have here? Love Mother Earth. Is this so to speak? Are we doing so to speak? We are. Did you show yeah. graphic? Yeah. It's a cool mountain green Where was apple. I, Where was I love a green there? apple. Right here we go. This is green apple soda. And look, look. So look, last Mark. week we had a lemon soda. That's right. Look, Carl, I'm doing this. I saw you doing that. Not this, <laughs> Carl. I'm doing this. All right. All right. So you're kind of like gripping it like it's a. So it, my mouth never. Look. Like it's a penis see? or something. No, see, my mouth never hits the bottle. Let's watch. That's called the canteen swill. 
You do that, it rolls over your hand. So each individual person has hand meat and juice in their... Oh, wow. That's good. That's not too apple-y? It's not as uh, sour as Granny Smithy. Sorry. Sorry. Right. This you is know called I mean? Cool Mountain Green Apple. That's good. I appreciate somebody that brands something as a green apple flavor. Well, I, I like going wireless. I got to tell you right now. That is not... Uh, I like going wireless. Green apple usually <laughs> means really sour, like a yeah, granny it's, smith. It's like, oh, bite. This has the green Sourness. apple flavor Sweetness. without being too stupid about right, it. Right, it's not stupid. It's not stupid. It's a soda, it's not stupid. You need somebody to get on a give us a database of folks. That's so to good. Speak. I won't kill it because there's no. Uh, who wants some more of that? You should try it. Get up on We've that. been just doing the, what do you call it? Canteen, Canteen swill. swill. Yeah. That's, how, that's our so to speak. That's how grown men drink. When you got to trade a bottle back and forth, which happens even occasionally as a, a grown gentleman, you don't just mouthball it because okay. you'll catch. I have to show how great he actually is. You'll catch. You'll catch stuff doing that. You don't catch stuff, okay. folks. Look how great it is. Yeah. It's really it's fluorescent. It don't is. catch Look stuff, folks. That that's Switch good. to direct give TV. It a, give it a chance. Okay. Let's wrap up, so to speak, and take this opportunity to go into a chip chat. Let's fly right into a chip chat. We're flying right into it like a, uh, like a bunch with of... With our pants on fire. Oh, my jeez. I'm stepping on my records down here. All right. Okay. Oh, oh my microphone came off. Uh-oh. Take this moment to tell you happy birthday. Well, a little Jimmy Dixon's visited from uh, southeast Arizona. And uh, we want to wish Jimmy a happy birthday. Happy we'll, birthday. We'll remind everybody it's Dave Kingman bobblehead night next week. We should come out with those 500 fans of Dave Kingman bobblehead. I can't wait for baseball season just around the corner. Any graphic. How about, did you do I chip get chat? You went chip chat, right? Did you pick that out some one? chips we're going to talk about? I'm doing an open bag special. No, okay. Just go to it. Here we are. And I'm going to do... So tell us about the open bag special real quick. Okay, now, this open bag special this week... Does that week, say IGA? It yeah. is IGA. Now, let me tell you. Uh, I, IGA is a uh, grocery store... Oh, man. That, um... Every small town in America has an IGA. Not every small well, town, not Steve. Every, not every. Some e small towns. Every every small town should have an IGA. And here's the story. The IGA actually stands for Independent Grocers of Alliance. America. That's a communist Alliance. Name. So th the idea is IGA. Excuse I'm hiccuping. Don't do that. This is crap. Nobody wants this to. Is awful. Nobody wants to hear that. IGA gives folks uh, this is so bad. I want to speak about it. the opportunity You're to not bind, speak on it. You don't have a microphone to buy into a franchise, so you can be like Steve Fevers, IGA Groceria. Uh, so they let people have their local ownership, so they've been rooted in this the community. This is actually a very good tasting sour cream and onion. Very oniony. That, that's what I'm getting to, you. Steve. Well, get on through it, man. You're blowing my wad. You're making the show long. Sour but cream. IGA. You're getting on me about the long show. Independent no, no, no. Grocers is an alliance. So, but it's cool. They let them. They let them franchise their thing, so it's not like every food line or Harris Teeter or whatever. Okay. Everybody's got their own little community flavor well, in the, the IGA. Well, the chips are the chips, though. But the chips are the chips. chips. The chips are the chips. And our open bag special for this evening is the IGA store brand sour cream and onion. The way I describe this... Not so sour creamy, more oniony. I don't know how else to describe this other than this tastes like sour cream and onion store brand stuff tasted in the damn 1980s. I have never, I have never in my life had anything taste so remarkably 80s ever. It's tremendous. It's a great sour cream and onion chip. Boy. Uh, Boss man hooked us up with these now. So, Where'd he go? He's uh, been hanging out up, in the District up, of Columbia. Up to the lake, that's where he got it. No, District of Columbia. No, not from, not from those. No. These are from Wilkesboro. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So don't sleep on IGA, folks. Well, I never do. No. I'm fond of IGA. There's not one that close to here, but I'm sure there's one around your way. We've got one more. 
for chip reminds this me, evening? Reminds me of going to Indiana. IG, pacer. IGA. Pacer yourself. <laughs> you see, I took the, as a sports team. <laughs> Basketball. Okay, how about a little Uncle Ray's for that ass, our Michigan friend. See, I thought Uncle Ray was a Southern man. But you know, he's an American. Here's an Uncle Ray's we have not had. Jalapeno. We like the hot business here, right? I gotta keep this, by the way. It's four bucks. And our lesson uh, on the back. Everybody? Everybody comment down for Uncle Ray's lesson. All right, everybody listen up. This, what's the title of today's lesson? Today's title is orderliness. Orderliness. Which is very important. And That's a go. long word. That's true. Arranging myself and my surroundings to achieve greater efficiency. I should sit in Lotus style. Think about that for a second. Arranging myself and my surroundings to achieve greater efficiency. Okay. It's something we should all be striving for working in on our it. life. I'm working on it. Our personal life. Here we go. Here are simple things to remember to help you to demonstrate orderliness. Bold to word. demonstrate order, orderliness. In everyday life. I will. I will. Colon. Colon. Um, pick up after myself. Pick up after myself. I'm trying. Okay. Um, I think everybody in my family could say that. Keep my work and play areas clean and neat. Keep my work and play areas clean and neat. Uh, work area is a little, uh, little messy. Play area. Play area is a little, little dirty too. They're all dirty. All my areas are dirty. You gotta get to shut up. Especially my <laughs> downstairs area. When you get to my downstairs area, it's especially uh, not neat. Put things back where they belong. Put things back where they belong. Now. That's a challenge for most people. That's a challenge. Uh, okay. I, I won't say any more about that. Use things only for their intended purpose. So when you go to the store to buy cucumbers, and they end up being nicely uh, curved just in the right way, what? you still only cut them up and put them into your salad. Okay. No I matter. So, I have to agree with you. No matter what Jesus or anybody else tells you, yeah. you cut them up, you put them in your damn salad. That's it. That's all you got. What if you're giving a, a no, a, sir, three, salad? Three pounds of ground meat. One, two, one, two, three one, pounds two, of ground two, meat. Two, you can do whatever you want. One, two, three. Don't you have more freedom to do one, two, three things. Salad. Um, <laughs> return lost things to their rightful owner. That's, That's a good way to live your life. Chips. Are there any more way? points on this? That's a good way to live your life. Wait, is there a get... story on there too? There is. I'm just. I just want. Yeah, we, want we, we don't want. We don't want to drag this on too long. Here we go. Nice, nice chip, though. Look at this that. This is the jalapeno flavor. Now, Uncle Ray's is one of our favorites, folks. Out of Michigan? Out of Michigan. Hey, you want to show that to the camera? I appreciate it. Oh, that's a good chip, folks. That's jalapeno, but it's not like up your bucket, Joe Boo jalapeno. Up your bucket. That's good stuff. Real light. Uh, almost wow. got a kettle consistency to the uh, chip. Nice bite, though. But not too crunchy. Not too crunchy, not too hot. Perfect. Good chip. Perfect. What, do you want, what else you want Perfect me to say? Perfect jalapeno chip. What else you want me to say? Uncle Ray's solid. Uncle Ray is solid every damn time. This is the first time we've got a big bag of Uncle Ray's. Mm -hmm. Usually we got the little bitty bags. And uh, this also came from IGA in North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. Um, yeah, if you, if you go to convenience stores, it's going to be the little bag. Probably. Yeah, this is the first bigger bag. Five ounce bag, I believe. Four point two five. Um, all right, let's wrap up this edition of uh, Chip Chat. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here, finish. So, go back to so to speak, real quick. <laughs> I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. All right. Okay. Thanks everybody for joining us for Grown Man Record Night. We've had a good time this evening talking about a shit ton of new and cool records. Yeah. Did a little Stratocaster theme. We're going to play some Stratocaster records 
right after the break. We're gonna play them okay. hardcore. Let's switch this out. Do one right now. Yeah, we're gonna do one. We're gonna, we're, we're we're getting ready to get crazy with switching oh, stuff up. Song yeah. So, um, hey, thanks for joining us, man. Be sure to visit our Facebook page, our YouTube page, and join us every Friday night for Ustream, uh, our Ustream broadcast that's live. And so, um, hey, thanks for everybody for joining us live. Thanks everybody. Ustream. I got a, I got a, I got a new. Um, Thank you, everybody. Got my intro to VC video coming out. Got I can't a wait to see that. I can't out. wait to see that. A lot of cool things about that. A lot of cool things. Coming How out. long is that thing? That's eh, several minutes. It's engaging. Is it on YouTube now? No. Can I watch it? Yeah, it should be. Hopefully by the time what this What day will it be up? Hopefully by the time this gets up, it'll be up. It's coming up. All right. So, hey, everybody. For Cameraman and uh, uh, our studio audience and Steve Fever, I'm Mikey Bananas. Thanks for joining us for Man Record Night. We'll catch you next week with all new fantastic business and um, stuff that will just blow your mind for your own Friday night, particular business areas. And uh, we'll see you next time. Boy, we sure do appreciate you. And we thank all of our internet friends. We'll see you next time. Grow Man Record Night.